Hello everyone this is part 12 of what if Naruto was banished and becomes master swordsman, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the intro. Five AM, Kanoa. Another day, another problem, ran through Sunit's head. The Hokage didn't get to return home, she had to pull an all-nighter once again. Her paperwork was piling up and, well, the Hokage was a little on the indolent side. Sunit thought to herself, just a few more papers and I'm home free. No worries, no problems. Sunit continued to write on the scroll. Out of nowhere, she grabbed a kunai and threw it at the ceiling. Instead of falling on her face, Hinata landed on one knee. Sunid, realizing who it was slapped her head with her hand, spoke too soon. She put her pen down, Hinata, I see you have decided to return. Technically, I can declare you a missing nin for your actions, but Jiraiya and Shizun informed me of what happened. So, how is Naya these days? Hinata stood up, Naya sensei is good. And Naruto? Sunid asked truly wanting to know. Well, Naruto-kun is training hard. It seems that the Horatian is giving him problems, and he is trying to master the second technique of the sword, I believe. Hinata answered. Oh, so what do you want to do now? Sunid said, returning to her writing. Hinata thought about it, then responded, I don't know, maybe put me back in the hospital and say that I woke up. Sunid spoke once more, well, I guess we can do that, but we have to move fast. I placed a seal on your room that doesn't allow the Byakugan to penetrate it and you're lucky you're in my office, because a similar seal is in place. However, who's to say that your father didn't see you sneak in the village, which I'm surprised at, seeing as I up the night patrols. I'm a ninja of the village Sunid Sama, I know how to get in my home village undetected and besides, father is sleeping right now. He won't be up for another hour. She informed the Hockage. Sunid stood up from her desk and walked up to the Hugo girl, glad that you're back, but if you put me between a rock and a hard place again, I'll kill you. The eerie smile on her face scared Hinata, she imagined what could happen and shuddered. Sunid placed her hand on the girl's shoulder, see you in two hours. Hinata gave the Hokage a look of bewilderment, two hours, what are you? Hinata fell over into Sunid's arms. The Hokage needed to get the girl back to her room undetected but how was she going to accomplish that without the guards outside of her door becoming curious? Sunid decided to leave Hanata in her office. She then exited her office and locked the door behind her. She looked at the two guards, you two go home and rest. Take the next two days off. The female nodded with an appreciative look, thank you god I'm Sama, you are truly the best. Sunid waved the girl off. The only person she could trust with this was Sakura, Shizun was off and she didn't want to disturb her. Sakura is in the hospital and she knows the situation. With a cage bunshin mixed with a henge of Hanata should work perfect. Ten minutes passed before Sunid reached the hospital. She knew Sakura would be here this early checking on the elderly patients. She was a right. Sakura was just finishing up with an elderly lady. Judging by the cast on her arm, it was easy to determine that it was broken. The old lady alerted Sakura to Sunid's presences, or at least she thought she did. Sakura turned to her sensei, Sunid Shishu, what are you doing here? When you're done Sakura meet me at Hinata's room. Sakura's been around Sunid long enough to know what her tone and look implied. So, Hinata's back. I wonder what sensei's plan to cover this up is. Sakura finished tending to the old lady. Being courteous, she gave the lady a warm smile, which the elderly woman returned. Sakura then headed off to Hanata's room. Sunid was waiting outside of the room for Sakura. Sakura walked up to Sunid, she then opened the door and the two proceeded into the room. Sunid closed the door behind her immediately. She turned to Sakura, I'm sure you came to the conclusion why I need your help. Here's how it's going to go down. I need you to make a cage bunch and mixed with henge. Hanata, I presume. Sakura interjected. Yes, Hanata. She's in my office and I want to place her on the stretcher. With you hanged as an unconscious Hanata, no one would be the wiser. Sakura was a bit skeptical at this actually succeeding. Doctors would wonder why the Hokage would have to take Hanata to her office to do whatever it was she had to do, but Sakura decided to stick with her sensei. 
She formed the hand sign for the cage bunshin and another Sakura was beside her in an instant. The other Sakura transformed into Hanata. The henge of Hanata spoke, so, what I guess that I lay on the stretcher and play sleep right. Sunid nodded her head, pretty much. Hurry, I want to get this over with. Hanata, Sakura's cage bunch and henge combination, laid down the stretcher and pretended to be asleep. Sunid looked at Sakura, okay, just follow my lead. Sakura opened the door and Sunid pushed the patient out of the room. Nurses and doctors stopped for a second to see the Huga, whom they hadn't seen in two months. They wondered what was wrong with the girl that the Hockage had to tend to her specially. The nurse and doctors didn't stare for too long. That would only make the Hockage scream at them to get back to work and that was something that they didn't want to happen. The two continued their trek to the Hockage Tower. Ten minutes later, Sunid and Sakura were now inside her office with Hinata laying on the couch. The henge disappeared soon after they entered the room. Sakura turned to Sunid, Sensei, what are you going to tell everyone? The only reason why no doctor stopped us was because you're, um, you. So, what excuse do you have? Sakura asked in curiosity. Sunid motioned for Sakura to help her place Hinata on the stretcher. Well, I could always say that Hinata was infected with an advanced strain of a poison that I thought that died out in the Second Great Shinobi War from the cure I created. However, I infected myself and well you are my best student next to Shizun and I need to see if the cure I have worked. Sakura knew that was believable, but why take her out of the hospital? Sunid knew that would be the next Sakura ask she decided to explain, she was confined to her room due to the effect the poison was having on her skin and her organs. When you guys returned with her, she started to break out with massive rashes and disgusting boils. Plus, she was in critical due to organs shutting down and needed to be isolated and treated with care. The reason I took her out of the hospital was because all of the equipment I have is here and well, Jirai bought me purple peppermint leaves, which is a major component for the cure not to mention. Sakura finish up, that they are hard and near impossible to find this time of year. Also, you have to administer them quickly before they turn deep purple, which is about a day or so after they are plucked. You couldn't seal it in a tube because this type of medicine can't be preserved. As soon as it's finished you have to administer it and not a second later. I think the name of the poison is, Black Death, that was the one you were talking about, right Shashu? Sunid smiled at her student for understanding where she was going with this. You have a gift Sakura. No doubt you will surpass me one day. I'm surprised you knew about such a virus, late night reading. Yes. I didn't know what poison you were referring to but as soon as you mentioned, purple peppermint leaf, as a primary component for the cure I knew it was, black death. Well, I think that will work sensei, let's get Hanata to the hospital. Sakura opened the door and the two headed out of the Hokage's office with the real Hanata this time on the stretcher. Sunid was going home to have a nice long shower and a long nice sleep. She knew when she decided to come in at one she was going to have paperwork out of the ass. Well she was the leader, she could always get a tune-in to help her cut down the load, the perks of being a hockage she thought. 7am at the training grounds. Konohamaru was hitting the log with fierce intensity. His goal was to become a stronger ninja for his village. When Asuma had him sign the contract for the monkeys, he knew that he had to live up to his grandfather's legacy, plus make a name for himself. Konohamaru punched and punched until bits off wood started peel. I have to protect everyone, but not in my current condition. What happened to Narutoni san and that clan, his thoughts went to his family and his friends, but the last image that popped into his head was Hanabi. He started to increase the force in which he hit the wood, I will not let it happen. Standing in a tree not too far watching the young boy punch while talking to himself, was the only Junin in the village with a black vest. So you wish to get strong to help others, Sarutobi Konohamaru. Konohamaru stopped hitting the wood and turned toward the tree Senzairu was in. Are you going to watch me all day or what? Senzairu jumped down and walked toward Konohamaru, well, I was actually waiting for my squad. We're training here today. Do you need the area now? Don't worry about it, we can find another location. Well, I'm going to head back to another training ground. I'm sure Ranpu will find me and lead the others to me. I guess I'll see you later Konohamaru. Senzairu walked off leaving the third's grandson to train in solitude. Konohamaru continued with his training, but the calling of his name caused him to turn around. 
He waited for Senzairu to speak, your punches could have much more force if you were to put your weight into the punch. You might also want to get weights to increase your power and speed, also I suggest you go talk to Guy about that. Just a suggestion, that's all. Konohamaru turned back to the wooden log. He threw his regular punch which didn't really do anything to the wood. He decided to give what Senzairu said a chance. When put his weight behind his punch he could see the difference in force and he was satisfied. Konohamaru continued to follow the advice he was giving. Damn, I should have asked him his method on kicking. Hospital. Tsunid was standing over Hyuga Hanata. The doctors were now allowed to check her condition. From what they could see she was sleep. Tsunid, who decided to use her intellect, decided to give a lesson to the younger doctors. I know all of you heard of, Black Death, this poison claimed the lives of many shinobi in the Second Great Shinobi War. A lot of you were not around then, but those who were knew the terrifying effects of the disease. When Hanata first came in, I gave her the cure, however, this was an advanced strain and the cure only slowed it down. Since Shizun was my personal student and I have trained her longer, I entrusted her with Hanata's care once I cured the girl. I have explained to you earlier my other reasons for doing what I did which I'm sure you understand. Now we see patient A is recovering and should be up soon. This information doctors is classified. I don't want our shinobi worrying over this, I feared that they would try to avoid missions and such because of what the poison can possibly do. Quote. Sakura looked at her sensei, niece Sunid sama I think this story is believable. As soon as you mentioned the name of the poison, everyone panicked, even the senior doctors. One of the elder doctors spoke, Sunid sama don't you think we could have helped? If not, it would have been a learning experience. Sunid responded in a calm but knowledgeable, yes, you could have learned from this, but you would have been in my way and I probably wouldn't have been able to get her organs back to an operable state while focusing on what I had to teach you. Some things are innate while others are easy to learn. Even if you saw what I did, it doesn't mean that everyone would have the same or similar effects. You have to act according to every situation, you know this doctor. Yes, you're absolutely right Sunid Sama. I remember my first stint under you as a rookie doctor. I froze when I saw a shinobi come in here with third degree burns on 90% of his body. I was taught what to do in similar situations, but my hesitation with that patient, the doctor looked away as bad memories of a man he let die because of his fear of what he saw. Sunid knew that look, every medic has been there. Even though she was lying about Hinata's previous condition, she knew more than anyone that in this field, any hesitation and any wrong turn could cost someone their life. The doctors understood why she didn't let them help her with Hinata. Even her prized students were not in the room with her when she was healing the girl, which was strange. One of the younger female doctors spoke, so, what is the purpose of this demonstration if we don't get to see you administer the drug on the patient? The purpose of this is to show you how bad a person's situation can be at critical time for the village. In such situations you must be able to handle it without causing panic. Sure this wasn't a virus that could have infected everyone that she came in contact with, but it was a deadly poison and if the shinobi, which are the strength of the village, refuse to do missions then the villagers suffer. I'll tell you all like I tell Sakura, you will all have to make decisions for the sake of the village. The majority of you are shinobi and know this, while others are masters of medicine but also know what panic and fear can bring. I'm sure you will face a similar situation in the future. My expertise will not be available so what will you medics do? I suggest you all continue studying and trying to find ways to improve and make Kanoa the greatest place when it comes to healthcare. I'm heralded as a medical specialist, but that's only because I study day and night. So, she looked the shinobi who asked her the question, the purpose is to show you medics that you must continue to grow. Newer virus strains, stronger bacteria, and more potent poisons are being created. The question is, will you all rise to the challenge and find and form cures and vaccines for them? You think about that and arrive to your own answer. I have sleep to catch up on. I will see you all later. The doctors all took Sunid's speech to heart. She was right on so many levels. They left Hanata's room with renewed attitude, remembering why they decided to get in this field. Most decided that they would start their studies and research. By giving everyone a bullshit story, Sunit didn't realize that she renewed the drive in her medics to become better and make Kanoa the number one healthcare provider in the world. Sakura couldn't help but laugh at the irony in it all. 
to motivate others without even realizing that you did, I guess that is the ability of a hawkage. Well planned, Sunad Sama. Well planned. Sakura walked out of the room and headed to her apartment. She would have to tell everyone the good news, starting with Eno. Sakura's apartment. Eno was happy. So, Hinata is finally back. That's great. I have to tell Neji and the others. Don't worry about it, Sunad sent a messenger to inform the Hyuga clan. I'm sure they will be getting the message if they haven't already. Sakura informed her best friend. So what's up with you and Sasuke? Ino asked. Sakura sighed, I don't know. He's just too closed off sometimes. The loss to Naruto has made him obsessed with being stronger than Naruto. Most of his time consists of training and his current mission to watch over Hayami-chan. I've seen him when I hang out with Yumi-san. He always looks pissed that he got stuck with guard duty. That's the way the leaf crumbles I guess. Ino finished with a shrug. True, but you would think a guy would treat his woman with more respect. I want to strangle him sometimes. Yumi and Naruto, now that's the type of relationship I long for. Sakura had a far off look thinking about how good those two were to each other from the times she had seen them interact. If I recall, the half that is responsible for that relationship was crushed by you. It kind of suck when you think about it, right Sakura? Ino had to point this out to Sakura. She could have had Naruto, but yet she let a good thing pass her by. The pink hair Kaneki before her was her best friend, but she just couldn't feel sorry for her. Sakura made her choice and she would have to deal with it. Envying Naruto's relationship wouldn't help her situation. Sakura spoke, yes, but Naruto was always the idiot. He wasn't. As cool as Sasuke, Ino cut her off laughing. Now that I think about it, I wonder why I was ever attracted to him. Granted he is attractive, but it's like you said he doesn't try to associate with people. He has always been like that. I know you know him a whole lot better than I do since you were on his team, so our opinions of Sasuke differ. All I can say to you is to do what you feel is best. I'm behind forehead girl. Thank you Eno pig. No problem. Well I'm heading to the flower shop, I will see you later. Eno left Sakura at the kitchen table to think over her current situation with the Uchiha. Sakura didn't know whether she should give up on Sasuke or not. She got up went to her room. She would sleep on it. 1 p.m., Hyuga Manor. Hyuga Hyashi was sitting at his desk sipping on his tea. He finally got word that his daughter was now up, but why should he care? He did place her into the branch house, did he not? Still, she was a Hyuga and he would go see her. He also noticed subtle changes in Hanabi. The girl was outside of the clan more often than she used to be. Her training wasn't suffering, but he could tell that his heir's mind was elsewhere. He looked out of the window near his desk. He could see Hanabi sitting under the Sakura tree in their yard, lost in thought. He decided to leave the girl be, he would resume her training tomorrow. Hanabi was confused. She kept telling herself that she didn't like that idiot. It just wasn't possible. She tried to deny it, but deep down she knew she was kidding herself. Her thoughts went back to earlier today. Flashback. Konohamaru continued his assault on the log. Hanabi was following her regular routine, which consisted of training with her father from 6 to 8 in the morning and training on her own from 8 to 10 in the morning. She was going to her favorite training spot, but was surprised that it was occupied. Just her luck, he was there. Konohamaru stopped his training once he saw Hanabi. Hey Hanabi-chan, how are you? What are you doing here? She asked without even so much as to give him an answer. Training of course, I'm not going to be hockage sitting on my ass, you know. Konohamaru said to the Hyuga. Hockage. She hadn't heard him say that since they graduated. So, you still have that foolish dream. It's not a foolish dream. Konohamaru snapped. She didn't expect that from him and it startled her a little. He saw this and quickly apologized, I'm sorry about that, but it isn't a foolish dream. Do you know why I want to be Hokage? Is it because you want to live up to your grandfather's name? Hanabi said, kind of unsure of what was his response would be. No, that's not it. When I was younger yes, but as I got older I wanted to be Hokage to protect the village. Being Hokage is my dream. He looked away, the anger was visible in his eyes. This was the first time Hanabi saw him angry towards her. Do you have a dream Hanabi? Konohamaru asked in a soft calm voice. The Hyuga was caught off guard by the question. What was her dream? Sure, 
She was being groomed to be the head of the clan, but was that her dream or was it her father's? Hanabi didn't know how to answer that question. Konohamaru continued, the point I'm trying to make is that whatever your dream is, it's not stupid, because if you want it, you can achieve it. It's hard work though, and I might have to train beyond belief to become the Hokage, but I will achieve my dream. Whatever your dream is I'm sure you will achieve. Can I ask you a question? Hanabi waited for him to ask the question, I want you to be completely honest with me. Konohamaru took a step closer to Hanabi, he was now in her personal space, which made her uncomfortable, but in a good way. He then looked into her pale eyes and continued, do you like me? Hanabi turned around and started to walk off. She couldn't do this, not now. However, Konohamaru grabbed her hand, she turned around immediately and yelled, what do you want from me? Do you want me to say that I like you? Do you want me to say that I was scared that I thought you were going to die out in the forest? Do you want me to say that although I find you annoying, that I enjoy your company, what, what do you want from me? Hanabi lowered her head avoiding his gaze. Konohamaru acted on instinct. He slowly lifted the girl's chin and pressed his lips against the lips of the slightly shorter girl. Hanabi was caught off guard. Her defense was down, she started to kiss back. After a couple of seconds Hanabi pulled away. She backed away from Konohamaru, you shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have, I have to go. The girl ran off. Konohamaru yelled for her to stop but he she blurred out of sight before he could give chase. Konohamaru put his head down. What's so wrong about caring about you Hanabi? What's so wrong with liking you? Konohamaru was done with his training. He needed a bath and something to eat. The boy left the training ground with one thing on his mind, Hugo Hanabi. End of flashback. Hanabi still couldn't believe what had happened. She had her first kiss with a boy and it was with Konohamaru. But the thing that she couldn't get over was that it actually felt good. I'm not supposed to feel this way. I can't act like this, I can't be this weak. Her concentration was broke when she sensed Neji coming her way. She stood up and dusted off her pants, she then looked at her cousin, Neji Nisan, is there something you wish to speak to me about? Neji analyzed her before responding, she's conflicted, but about what? By the looks of it, it has something to do with a boy. Neji decided to tell her the good news, yes, Hanata is awake. I thought you would want to know. Neji left Hanabi behind. This day was just full surprises. First Konohamaru kissed her and then Hanata woke up. The young Hugo was heading in the direction Neji was heading, which she assumed was the hospital. However, her father's voice stopped her, Hanabi, wait. I will come with you to see your sister. Hanabi was surprised that her father wanted to come, but she didn't care. Hyashi joined his youngest child and the two headed off to see Hanata. Hanata's room. Hanata was sitting up in the bed and was surrounded by a bunch of her friends. Kiba, Shino, Kuranai, Team Ten, Sakura, and Sunid were present. Kiba was happy that she was finally up and he was telling her stories of his and Akamaru's missions. She knew Kiba over-exaggerated a bit, but that was Kiba. Shino, however, stopped Kiba's blabbering when he asked, How are you feeling, Hanata? I'm feeling fine, Shino-kun. Sunid Sama said I would be able to leave later on today. I didn't know I was out for two months. Everyone there with the exception of Kuranai, Shikamaru, Shino, Tenten, Lee and Guy knew where Hanata was. The group continued to talk until Neji walked with two other guests behind him. Sunid sighed, not today, please not today. Father, Hanata said in a shocked voice. He just narrowed his eyes at her. I see you're awake. So, did you get enough rest, or are you still taking it easy these days? This comment caused Kuranai, Kiba, and Lee to narrow their eyes. Sunid just sighed again. She knew where this was going. You disgrace us by getting kidnapped in your own home. How can you be so weak? His last word caused Hanata to look at her hands. She thought he came by because he was worried, but it was just to berate her some more. Kiba couldn't stand it any longer, can't you just be happy that your daughter woke up? What the hell did Hanata ever do to you, you prick? I thought I said Mutz should stay in their place, Hyashi said, which resulted in Lee and Chuji holding him back. Damn it, Chuji, Lee, get the hell off of me. Let me kick his ass. Sunid decided to end this. She gave Kiba a look that caused the young Junin to calm himself or else. She looked at Hyashi, your daughter just woke up, this isn't the time or the place. I am going to have to ask you to leave. 
I was leaving, Sunid Sama. He then turned back to Hanata, how could you turn out to be like this, how pathetic. Hyashi motioned for Hanabi to follow him. The little girl was reluctant to do so, because she actually wanted to converse with Hanata, but she didn't want to disobey her father. Hanabi followed her father. Hanata fists were clenching. She decided it was now or never, father, wait. Hyashi turned around and looked at her. Hanata, who now had his attention spoke, I know why you hate me. It's not my fault though. I have tried to prove myself to you, but my best was never good enough. I will prove to you that, that I'm not weak. He turned his back on her, whatever. The next thing that came out of Hanata's mouth caused everyone to be shocked, then to prove I'm not weak in your eyes I challenge you for the main house head seat. Hyashi turned around, this was unexpected. He saw the unwavering determination in the girl's eyes, but she couldn't challenge even if she wanted to. I applaud your effort, but your challenge cannot happen. You're a branch member and you have the curse seal. Branch members and members with the seal cannot challenge for the seat. I know father, but you forget that I wasn't born a branch member. I'm the firstborn of the ruler, which means I can challenge for my rightful spot. Second, Hinata unwrapped the bandages from her head. What she revealed caused everyone to stare in shock, with the exception of those with the knowledge of what happened. How, only I and a few other Hugas can, you, how, was all Hyashi could say. When I was kidnapped, it wasn't what it seemed. Naruto-kun, who knows Naya-san, took me to her location to have my seal removed. Father, I respect you, but you have no reason for me not to challenge you for the seat. Hanata informed her father who was now looking at Sunid who shrugged, hey, it's all news to me too. He somehow doubted that, but no matter, he would give her what she wanted. Okay Hanata, it seems you have a brain in that head after all. I will let you challenge for the seat only on one condition. What is the condition? Hanata was curious. The condition, if you lose, you will kill yourself. That will be the final disgrace I will allow from you which caused uproar, well mostly Kiba acting like the protective older brother. Neji was at odds, but he knew he couldn't do anything or his seal would be activated. Are you fucking crazy? You want her to kill herself? Your. I accept. Hanata's response caused all eyes to focus on her. Kiba turned to Hanata, Hanata, you can't. Please Hanata, reconsider. Kurenai was hoping the girl would listen to Kiba. Hanata ignored Kiba, if I defeat you father and take control, you will have to step down immediately. Of course, but you won't be fighting me. Hyashi turned to Hanabi. Hanata's eyes expanded and so did Hanabi's. You will be fighting your sister. You have yet to beat her and well, you're in a lose-lose situation. I will give you the chance to decide when you want to lose. Tomorrow, Hanata said without hesitation. So be it. I should kill you for having the seal removed but I will let you do that yourself. Hanata knew that everything was on the line. She looked at Hanabi, Hanabi-chan, you know I love you and you will always be my sister. However, tomorrow I will treat you like an enemy. I never fought you to my fullest, because I never thought that we should fight, but tomorrow I'm fighting for something. You will not win Hanabi. Hanabi didn't like Hanata's declaration and it showed. Her sister never beat her so what makes her think she would be able to do so now? and to think everything was going good and this happened. She couldn't help but laugh at Hinata, you have yet to beat me. Don't act tough in front of your friends, it's just going to make me embarrass you more. You know what, Hanabi turned to Hyashi, father I want all of her friends present. I want them to see me beat her. Hyashi like this. He nodded in agreement. She turned back to Hinata, I don't know what you are trying to prove but, you should have left well enough alone. I don't want you to die, but you made this regrettable decision. Hanata smiled at Hanabi, maybe so, but the decision I made was my own. Hanabi, I don't want to fight you either, but if I have to, then I will. The clan will never change if something isn't done. Understand why I must do what I believe is right. Mother would have understood. The mentioning of his wife enraged him, especially since it was Hanata who mentioned her. Hyashi lost it and went to attack her, but found Sunid was holding the hand he prepared to attack with. Sunid was now pissed, I know you have issues, because your wife is dead, but if you ever try to attack one of my patients again, you will become one. Get out of my sight before I do something I regret, Hyuga. Hyashi massaged the hand that Sunid released. He gave Hanata one last look, noon in the courtyard. Hanata nodded. Hyashi walked out of the room. 
Hanabi tried to look tough, but she gave Hanata a sympathetic look. She turned away and left. Sunid was glad that was over, but she wondered if Hanata knew what she was doing. Hanata, are you sure about this? Yes, Hokage Sama. I know you all don't see my logic, but this has to be done. My family is not the perfect family. I know this, Neji Nisan knows this, and probably everyone else knows this. I'm doing the only thing I can do to ensure the change. Sunid understood. Kur and I spoke, if you need somewhere to stay Hanata, you can stay with me. I'm behind you all the way. Although Akamaru and I wish you wouldn't go through with this, you know we're behind you. Shino adjusted his glasses slightly, there comes a time when a butterfly must spread their wings and show the true colors. I have no doubt that everyone will finally get to see the colors that I have seen for so long. Thank you, Shino-kun. Hanata was glad her team was behind her. Shikamaru just sighed, this is troublesome. You get better Hanata. I have somewhere I need to be. Ino gave Sakura a nudge and whispered, yeah, he does and if he's not there soon Temari's fan is going to go upside his head. Sakura couldn't help but snicker. Temari and Shikamaru's relationship was a strange one. Sakura spoke, hey Shikamaru, if you see Sasuke, tell him I would like to talk. Shikamaru, who was heading for the exit, raised his hand in acknowledgement, Ino turned to Hanata, so, what is Naruto up to? Everyone tuned in for this, well, when I left Naruto was training with the sword. He was also trying to learn Horatian. Guy, Kur and I, and Asuma looked at one another. Guy spoke, how is that possible? The technique is what earned Yondime his nickname, Yellow Flash. How can Naruto even learn it? Well I guess H, Sunid interjected right away. Kakashi was ordered to give him the scroll when he turned 18. This was a direct order from Yondime. Asuma knew the real reason. His father was the Hokage and he had knowledge on things that most didn't. Besides him, Shikamaru and Kakashi, none of the other Junins knew the truth behind Naruto's heritage. Neji looked at Sunid. He then turned to Hanata. His gaze went back to the Hokage who said, what is it, Neji? He gave a smirk, nothing. I have a few things I need to tend to. I will see you later, Hanata. Neji left the group behind. Sunid knew that smirk. Neji knew, but how? Did Shikamaru tell him? She couldn't help but wonder. Sakura wondered why the Yondime told Kakashi-sensei to give him that technique as well. Something didn't click with Ino. She started to remember Shikamaru say that it was his birthright to have the kunai. Also, the kunai was the fourths, but why would he leave it to Naruto? It finally hit her. Before she could say anything soon it spoke, Ino, I need you to go to my office and wait for me. I have a mission that would benefit only you. I will meet you in there in five minutes, okay. Ino nodded, not really thinking about what Sunid had instructed her to do. Her revelation made sense and she was happy to figure out Shikamaru's hidden message. Sunid turned her gaze to the Huga, well Hanata, just rest for three more hours, then you are free to go. Everyone, let's go. Everyone except for Shino followed Sunid. She turned to Shino and asked, Shino, forgive me. Sunid Sama, but I need a minute and then I will be gone. Sunid decided it was okay to give him his minute. The others said the goodbyes and continued. When everyone was out of the room, Shino spoke, so, you finally know don't you? Know what? Hanata asked. The truth behind Naruto's heritage, if you know that, then I'm sure you know about his tenant as well. Shino said. Yes, but how do you know Shino-kun? It is my quiet nature that allows me to hear things that those who are on the opposite spectrum do not, Shino responded. Impressive as always Shino-kun, so how long have you known? Shino answered, about his tenant. I discovered this about two years after his banishment. His heritage, I discovered this last month. Father was speaking to an elder. I should have not infringed upon their privacy but my curious mind was the reason I didn't refrain from listening. On another note, I know you will win. It seems that you are more confident. It's time to show everyone what you are capable of. Get some rest, I will see you tomorrow. Hanata watched Shino leave. She laid back and started to think about what she was doing. Well, there was no going back. She was now at the point of no return. She didn't mind though. It was like Shino said, she would prove everyone wrong. One way or another, the Huga would change. She couldn't lose, she had to win if change was to happen. Naya's place. Naruto was holding the sword with both hands, breathing hard. 
The sweat that decorated his face illustrated that he was working his hardest. Kaito prepared his sword, shall we continue? Naruto's sword started to glow, sure, let's. Kaito put his sword away, well, I would, but I can't compete when you're using that technique. You're just going to cut through my sword like butter. I happen to like this sword, it's the second best sword I have. You already destroyed 30 or so of my swords. Come on sensei, I wanted to test out the technique I was working on. I can finally move on to the third technique now that I mastered the one I was working on. Please sensei, let me test it on you. Naruto begged. You're crazy right. Like I want to get hit with that technique, no way I won't be your first victim. So, how is Horatian training going? Naruto shook his head, I can only move about two feet and I use too much chakra just to do it. The technique is only supposed to use an insignificant amount of chakra that it doesn't affect you. I can't perform the technique right. I have to keep working at it. Kaito thought Naruto would at least have the Horatian down way before techniques from Heaven's Blade. He didn't know that the yellow flashes infamous technique was that difficult to learn. He motioned for Naruto to follow him, come Fox, let us get something to eat. I'm starving. Now you're talking, let's go. Naruto followed Kaito into the house. Naruto and Kaito entered the house. Before they could make their way to the kitchen they saw Naya, and from the clothes she was wearing it was clear she was heading out. Where are you going, Naya? Naruto asked. I have a couple of things that I need to take care of. I will come back either tomorrow or the day after. Just try not to destroy my place while I'm gone, Naya said to the two men. Kaito waved at her as he walked past her and headed to the kitchen. Naruto followed his sensei. Naya, who watched them pass, exited the house. Naruto, I expected you to be further in your training. I have to take precautions. I need to know if he is able to do it. Naya using Shunshin disappeared off of the mountain, her destination unknown. 7 p.m., Kanoa. After leaving her sister, Hanabi needed to clear her mind. Everything was just confusing. First Konohamaru kissed her, which she hated to admit it she liked, but on top of that, she had to fight Hanata. She didn't hate Hanata, the fact was she always cared for her sister. Sure she used being father's favorite to her advantage, but she didn't want Hanata to die. She contemplated just letting Hanata win, but that would make Hanata the head and it would also give her a win against herself. She had her pride. If Hanata died, sad as it may be, she would be doing her a disservice. Hanata would get everything she had, no more holding back on her sister. I will become head of the Hyuga clan. After all it is my Dre. An image of Konohamaru flashed in her head. Going back to the conversation that they had earlier in the day, was that really what she wanted? Clan head had been a goal she had been working toward for so long that she wondered, was it her dream or was it her father's? Do I really want to leave the Hyuga clan? Hanabi was at a crossroads. She loved her clan, but it was because of her clan that she really didn't have any friends. Her attitude might have to do with it, but kids only tried to be her friend, because she was a Hyuga. In a way she envied Hinata, because people saw her as Hinata, not just a Hyuga. She always wanted that. Konohamaru doesn't treat me like a Hyuga. The girl shook her head vigorously trying to get the boy out of her head. She couldn't because what he said made her realize that maybe leading the clan wasn't her dream. One thing was certain, she would search for it. Looking at the ceiling from her bed, Hanabi slowly got up and walked over to her closet to get a jacket. She needed to get some fresh air to clear her head, a walk would definitely be good she thought. Hanabi quickly left her room and exited the compound. After about five minutes of walking, she found herself on the busy streets of Kanoa. The sun was slowly dimming down. Shinobi and civilians were heading about their business. It didn't really matter to Hanabi, she had her mind on other things. She looked at the Hockage Monument. The idiot told her during one of their outings at the ramen stand that talking to his grandfather at the monument always cleared his head, maybe it would work for her. She decided against it. Hanabi continued to walk. After a few more minutes of walking she found herself sitting over a small bridge with a small body of water under it. Hanata, why did you have to do what you did? Why must it end like this? I'm supposed to be talking to you about what happened today. Isn't that what sisters do? The girl didn't realize that the moon had replaced the sun. She left the bridge and headed back home. She would need her sleep, tomorrow was going to be a long day. 
Karanai's apartment. Sitting on the window ledge looking at the moon in the night sky, Hinata couldn't help think about Hanabi. Could she bring herself to hurt Hanabi? It was like Naya Sensei said she would have to disregard the safety of her enemies. Not wanting to admit it, but the sad fact was Hanabi was now her enemy. Hinata felt a tap on her shoulder, Kuranai Sensei, is there something you want? Kuranai sat at the end of the leg day, just want to see how you were doing. I'm fine, Kuranai Sensei, Hinata said hoping Kuranai would buy it. She didn't. Hinata I have known you for far too long to know when something isn't right. Hinata, who had her head down slightly, looked at her sensei, Kuranai sensei, has there ever been a time in your life when you had to do something that you didn't want to do but know that it is for the best? Kuranai turned to look at the full moon, yes. I know what you're going through more than you know. Her thoughts went to Senzairu and Asuma. Senzairu, she still loved him but the fact was she also loved Asuma. Senzairu's timing couldn't have been worse. Both treated her well, but Asuma was the present, and although she contemplated leaving Asuma for Senzairu, she knew that it would be best if they remained friends, it was better for them in the long run. Her crimson eyes were now on Hinata, don't worry about it Hinata. You know what you have to do. Even if it hurts you to do it, it is something that is for the better is it not? Thank you, Kuranai Sensei. You have always been the big sister that I always wanted. Hinata hugged the female Junin who returned the warm embrace. I heard you hung out with Yumi-san and that little girl from that samurai clan earlier, Kuranai asked. Kiba-kun decided to treat me to barbecue when I was released earlier today. We ran into Temari-san, Shikamaru-kun, Yumi, Hayami, and even Sasuke-san. Temari and Shikamaru left us and Sasuke, Yumi, and Hayami joined us. Sakura, Lee, Tenten, Neji, Ino, and Chuji also joined. It was fun. I got to know Yumi-san and Hayami-san. Hinata said. Kuranai spoke, I can guess they asked how Naruto was. Yes. I informed them he was training. Hayami seemed to be happy and sad at the same time. Well it was an enjoyable experience if I must say, except Sasuke's and Sakura's sarcastic remarks to one another. But all in all, it was good to be with my friends. Kuranai was happy that the girl was back. Sunid had informed her about Hinata right after she told Kiba, Ino, Sakura, Neji, and Chuji. Kuranai was a little angry that Sunid didn't tell her sooner, but she had to accept it. She smiled at her student, I can't believe you challenged your father. You have achieved what you set out long ago to do Hinata. You have changed. I had a long day so I'm going to get some sleep. You can have the guest room, it's across from the bathroom. If you need anything, just knock on my door. Hinata nodded, thanks sensei. Kuranai left Hinata and headed to her room. Hinata, looked back at the full moon, no turning back. For Hinata, the future was now. Somewhere in Kanoa, Senzairu and Yugao were walking down the street, both coming back from having a drink with Anko, Genma, and Tenzu. When Yugao decided to leave, he decided to walk her home. It was a common occurrence over the past two months. Anko made a joke about the two being a couple. The two would often blush but would correct their comrades. Senzairu was now walking Yugao home. Ohio, Yugao san, Senzairu. It seems that you guys are enjoying each other's company a lot lately. Yugao and Senzairu, both blushing, turned to the side to see Kakashi coming out of a shop. Senzairu gathered his composure and spoke, Kakashi, how are you this evening? Bored, but I'm sure I will find something to entertain me. Kakashi informed Senzairu. Kakashi senpai, what do you plan on doing? Yugao asked. Kakashi pulled out his little red book and walked past the two. I guess since I'm off for a week, I will catch up on some reading. Also, Kakashi turned his head slightly to his right, you guys are being followed. Senzairu and Yugao head slightly turned in the direction Kakashi was looking. A couple of kunai flew their way, but due to their level of skill, the kunai were dodged effortlessly. Kakashi, Yugao, and Senzairu didn't even move from their spot. They just simply turned their bodies and moved their heads to avoid the incoming projectiles. One kunai was dead on and it was coming straight for Senzairu. Before it pierced his face, he placed his middle finger inside the hole at the hilt of the kunai. He started to spin it in his hand, you might want to come out and show yourself, Konohamaru. Konohamaru appeared before them in an instant scratching his head, you guys are really good. 
I never thought that the gap between Junan and Chunan would be this great. Yu Gao recognized the boy. Of course he was, you're the grandson of Sandaim. How are you honorable grandson? Konohamaru hated that. He was always under his grandfather's shadow. Konohamaru politely greeted her, but ignored her soon after, you, I remember you saying you were on my uncle's Jenin squad. Yes, but what does that have to do with anything Konohamaru? Senzairu questioned. Kakashi looked around, really no point of him being here, he disappeared leaving the three behind. The group didn't really pay any attention to the copy ninja. Konohamaru gave his reason, nothing I guess, I just want to ask you something. What is it? Konohamaru expression became serious. I want you to train me. Senzairu was caught off guard but he responded quickly, I wish I could, but there is a lot I have to do. You know the situation the village is in, not to mention that I have to get my squad prepared. Sorry, I can't train you Konohamaru. Please, my uncle doesn't have the time. I would ask Kakashi, but somehow I think he would refuse. Please, you seem pretty strong and well my uncle has said that you are a good fighter. I haven't begged for anything in my life, but I really need someone who is strong to train me. Konohamaru pleaded with Senzairu. Senzairu closed his eyes to think. He opened his eyes, why do you want someone to train you so badly? Why do you want to get strong? Konohamaru smirked, I want to be Hokage. No offense to your mother, but she's getting too old and she won't be able to protect the village much longer. Sasuke, a great ninja he is, but he is not fit to lead Kanoa. Since the person I thought would take the title of Rokodime is not going to, I'm going have to get stronger so I can take it. It's my duty to protect my family, friends, and all of the citizens of this great tree that which the leaves are on. Senzairu started laughing, you sound like your grandfather with, I must protect the great tree that the leaves are on, but I can see you really do care for this village. I'm curious, what makes you think that you are going to take the title of Rokodime? Yugao jumped in, Hokage Sama has not selected a successor. Uchiha Sasuke was selected by the council. Sunid can still override that with her choice. Senzairu turned from Yugao to Konohamaru, get real. Sasuke is far above you. You won't reach his level as fast as you think. It might take years. Sasuke was never a goal that I felt I had to pass to gain the title of Hokage. Naruto was and has always been my obstacle. But since I have no obstacles except my current strength level, my dream is that much more in reach. Konohamaru continued to stare Senzairu down. Senzairu looked deep into the kid's eyes, he's sincere about being Hokage. The kid is good for a Chunin even if he doesn't realize it. In a couple of years he will be a great Junin, however none of that will take him to the level that he wishes to go. Who is you current sensei? Senzairu asked. Ebisu, Konohamaru answered. Ebisu, really? Senzairu said. Not surprising, Ebisu is an elite teacher. Yugao pointed out. Well, Ebisu's chakra control has always been excellent, so were his grades from what I can remember. Even though he is a good Junin, that's not going to cut it. Senzairu said to Yugao who didn't understand what he was getting at. What do you mean? Yugao asked. You understand Konohamaru, which is why you asked me to train you right. Konohamaru nodded. What do you mean, I don't follow? Yugao waited for his answer. What I mean is in order to go to the next level you need an instructor that can do that. You also have to have the determination on top of that to go above and beyond. It's this combination that turns ninja into elite ninja. My great-grandfather trained his grandfather, his grandfather trained my mother, as well as Orokimaru and Jiraiya. Jiraiya trained the man who is heralded as the greatest ninja ever, Yondaim. Kakashi was trained by Yondaim himself. Kakashi trained Sasuke, Sakura, and well maybe Naruto a little. Every member on Kakashi's squad was trained by a Sanin and look at them now. Easily they are among the top ninja in the world. Senzairu said. So, you're saying stronger ninjas are better trainers? Senzairu shook his head at Yugao. What I'm saying is that you need someone who can pull that potential out of you. But you also have to work hard to become stronger. I was fortunate to train under my mother and my sensei. They saw my talent and helped me take it to the next level. Had I not worked hard, I wouldn't have been able to. Do you understand what I'm getting at, Yugao san? He made sense when she thought about it. Senzairu turned to Konohamaru, I'm guessing Ebisu was good enough to bring you this far, but to get to your goal you need someone who can help you hone your skills. How bad do you want this? 
I am willing to do whatever it takes, as long as it's done the right way. Senzairu could see the boy really wanted this. Personally, he never wanted to be Hokage, his father did though. He was relatively young when his father died, but he did remember his dream. It would be great way to honor his father's memory, what better way to do that than to train a boy who wanted the title more than anyone in the village. I'm a slave driver, Konohamaru. You're going to hate me, but I will do everything in my power to help you hone your skills. Konohamaru reacted by jumping up and down. Yes, so you will really do it. Konohamaru had to make sure that he agreed. Yes, I will help you. I will say this, a large part of this is on you. I can help and instruct, but it is up to you to push a break through the barriers that keep you at the strength that you are at now. Do you understand? Konohamaru responded by nodding his head. I will see you at my house at 4 a.m. sharp. We will train up until 8 every day until I see that my training is no longer required. At 8, I have to train my squad. You will be joining me with them until 10. I will train you along with them. But your training will be different from what I subject them to. He informed Konohamaru. Now go get some rest, I expect you in my mother's backyard at 4 a.m. Konohamaru lifted Senzairu in the air then put him down, you won't regret it sensei. I will give 200%. Konohamaru headed in the direction to his house happy. Yugao walked up to him and placed her hand on his shoulder, so, that's the kid you were telling me about earlier at the tea shop. Yes. That kid showed me something during the mission I had with him as well as earlier today. He showed me his heart, determination, and selfless nature. He has what it takes to lead this village. That's nice of you, you didn't have to train him, or walk me home. Which reminds me, are you going to continue walking me home or not? Yugao said in a playful manner. Senzairu held his arm out for her to hold on to, shall we? Such a gentleman, yes we shall. The two continued to Yugao's apartment. Naya's place, 10.30 p.m. Naruto didn't realize that he had been practicing for close to 10 hours. He was still stuck at two feet. That's how far he could go when he threw the Horatian kunai. If the kunai he threw went past the two feet mark he couldn't get the technique to work. Naruto threw the kunai in his hand. He transported two feet, he fell to his knees. Pissed off he punched the dirt, damn it. Two months here and stills no progress. That goddamn scroll. I can't believe this shit. Well, I can't quit, I have to get up and continue. Naruto slowly rose until he was standing. That's enough. Fox. Your chakra is low and I'm sure you need to take a bath. Tomorrow is a new day. Shower, sleep, and start fresh. Naruto looked away not wanting to admit his sense was right. Truth was he couldn't perform another Horatian if he wanted to. He was too tapped out. Naruto looked up to the sky, Hayami, Yumi, for the sake of you two I will master this technique before the battle starts. Naruto placed the kunai that was in his hand back in his pouch. He headed back inside the house remembering what his sensei said. Tomorrow was definitely a new day. Kanoa. On the Hokage monument there stood a lone figure in a black cloak. The cloaked figure looked down to see that the town was still alive, even at this hour. Not much has changed I see. The person with the cloak slowly removed the hood that covered the face. As the hood slowly fell back, what was revealed was long black hair and brown eyes. I must say, I do feel nostalgic. It feels good to be home, if I must say. The wind danced against the hair of the female who gazed upon the village. Naya was back in the leaf village, she was home, once again. Kanoa, 5 a.m. Most of Konohagaku was asleep at this hour. Konohamaru, on the other hand, was not. The nephew of Sarutobi Asuma found himself running through the village. He was surprised to run into Lee and Guy, but it couldn't be helped. From what his sensei had told him this was their daily routine. Since he arrived at Sunids, Senzairu had him running around the village. Konohamaru was now heading back to Sunids. According to the beeping of his watch, he had run more than an hour. When he arrived back at her house, he found his sensei waiting for him. You look tired. But, I know that's not the case. Konohamaru knew that if he told the truth more running would ensue. He decided to lie, no, I'm perfectly fine. What are we doing next, sensei? It's so good that you ask that Konohamaru, we are heading to the lake near the Uchiha district. I can see that you're tired, I will give you credit for gutting it out, but the running I put you through had a purpose. He informed the Chunin, who didn't quite understand. 
Senzairu continued, my purpose is simple. You're tired, we will fight on the lake. You're tired and you will also have to worry about placing the right amount of chakra into your feet to stay afloat. On top of that, you have to fight me. The odds aren't in your favor. Konohamaru grinned, bring it on. I told you already, whatever it takes. Senzairu stepped closer to Konohamaru, then let's go. The next thing Konohamaru saw was an afterimage of his sensei, damn, that was fast. Oh, well I'll make that look like nothing when I'm hockage. Konohamaru followed his sensei to continue his training. Huga compound. Hanata was all she could think about, well with few thoughts of Konohamaru here and there, but mostly Hanata. It was inevitable, she would defeat Hanata like always, but this time, Hanata would be gone forever. The council meeting last night was crazy, simply because the elders wanted Hanata's head for disrespecting the family by going behind their back. When father did make the proposal they thought of it as nothing more than a joke, but they agreed. In fact, they really couldn't disagree. There was nothing in the charter wrong with what Hanata did. They couldn't kill her for disrespecting the clan, not officially. They decided it would be better to have her defeat Hanata. Afterwards Hanata would have to commit suicide. If Hanata wins she lives and gets her rightful spot as heir back, but if she loses then she dies. It was decided. Hanabi may have acted unruly and spoiled at times, but she could never bring herself to be responsible for Hanata's death over something as stupid as who becomes the head of the Huga. No, she would throw the fight. She would make it look close, but ultimately, she would let Hanata win. After all, she was her big sister. Hanabi got off her bed. It was breakfast time according to the bell she heard. Today wouldn't be as bad as she thought, nope not at all. Somewhere in Kanoa, Hanata found herself walking. The sun was rising and she could smell the lake she was passing. She looked over to see two figures fighting, it's Konohamaru-kun, but I don't recognize that other guy. Hanata had nothing else really to do, so she decided to go watch the two spar, which she was certain they were doing. Hanata sat under a tree near the lake. She had to clear her mind of what was to happen in seven hours. Watching them would take her mind off that. Came to watch the fight as well. Hanata didn't realize that she wasn't the only one here. She turned to her right to see Shinji looking at the two battle. Yes, I really don't have anything else to do. Besides, I wanted to see who was fighting Konohamaru-kun, Hanata informed the man. She studied him for a bit. She had never seen him before, but he looked like a warrior. She knew he wasn't a threat, because if he was, she would have been dead already. Her staring uneased Shinji, is there something on my face? Oh, I'm sorry I don't recognize you at all. You're not from Kanoa, are you? He shook his head. No, I am not. I'm originally from sea country. Shinji, Manashu Shinji. And you are. Hanata extended her hand for him to shake. Hugo Hanata, it's nice to meet you. I met your cousin yesterday. So, why are you out here this early, if I may ask? I usually train out here by the water. It's so calming and relaxing, it reminds me of home. Shinji got a sad look when he thought about his home. Oh, I didn't mean to. It's okay. Shinji said, so, why are you out here? Well, Today I have to fight my sister for the head seat of my clan, Hanata told the stranger. Why, I thought a clan as renowned as the Huga would have better ways of selecting an heir. Shouldn't the eldest be the one selected? What, is your sister the oldest and you're challenged her? Shinji wondered. No, it's not like that. I'm the oldest, but my father, well let's just say he doesn't think too highly of me. Shinji could hear the sadness in the girl's voice expectations, I assume. Hanata looked at Shinji, what do you mean? Shinji responded, I can see it in your eyes. It's not easy being the heir, is it? You know my uncle wasn't the firstborn, my father was. When he was killed, I was too young to lead the clan, so my uncle did. I was groomed to succeed him, but not only that I was groomed to be better than my father. Shinji is going to be strong, he's the son of Shinshiro, or, Shinshiro's boy is the pride of this clan, it was always like that, expectations to be better than my father and my uncle. Oh, my father is a bit different. He has expectations, but no matter what, I can never meet them. He hates me for something that I had no control over. I never cared about leading the clan, I just wanted to hear him say, good job Hanata, or, I love you Hanata. I'm jealous of my sister in a way, the things that I wish from him, she gets easily. Shinji just looked at her. 
He wondered what she did that was so bad that would cause her father to hate her. Hanata looked away embarrassed. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. I barely know you and I shouldn't burden you with my life, I'm sorry about that. Shinji waved off her apology. He understood that sometimes people just needed to get things off of their mind and talking to strangers helped a lot. Don't worry about it. It seems us heirs have it hard. Error is not an option for us. Maybe, but without errors what goals are we to work toward? Shinji couldn't help but smile. Hanata had put it all in perspective for him. He stood up, I guess you're right. I have to go, I hope to talk to you again, Hugo-san. I would like that, but there's a condition with this fight today. If I lose I will have to commit suicide. There is a chance that I could lose. Hanata informed Shinji. Shinji grinned, then don't lose. It's rare that I talk to people with your intellect and one who understands me. I'm counting on you to win, Hugo-san. I will try my best, but please, call me Hanata. Shinji nodded. Okay, later Hanata-san. Enjoy your day, Shinji-kun. Hanata didn't expect to meet Shinji out there. Yesterday Hayami said that Shinji ni as she called him was mean. Hanata was expecting someone well, someone like Sasuke. He was nothing like that at all. If fact, he was someone who understood her, maybe it was because they both had as he said, expectations, set by others for them. Hanata decided not to think about it too much. She turned back and placed her hands behind her on the grass to use for support as she leaned back slightly. She watched the two continue their fight. Poor Konohamaru-kun. Hanata watched as Senzairu didn't pull any punches on the Chunin. On the lake. Konohamaru was doing everything in his power to stay above water. His chakra was running low. Boy did he need to work on his stamina. I guess this was the purpose of fighting here on the water. He would have to maintain his balance after running around the village for an hour, not to mention he was into a hand-to-hand -hand match with someone who wasn't pulling any punches. Konohamaru felt a foot press against his right cheek. This sent him skidding across the lake. He was tapped out, he ultimately started to slip under the water. His arms were tired, and his legs felt like they didn't want to move. He had no idea how he was going to get out of this godforsaken lake. When Senzairu walked over to him, he couldn't have been happier. Senzairu knelt down before the struggling boy, your stamina sucks. You want to be a decent ninja, you're going to have to work on it. Senzairu stood up and left the boy by himself. Konohamaru couldn't believe that he would leave him. When the brown-eyed Junin got on land, he saw Hanata running past him. Excuse me, he said, causing Hanata to turn around. What do you think you are doing miss? Senzairu asked the girl before him. Konohamaru needs my help, he's going to drown. If he drowns then he doesn't deserve to be hawkage. I would appreciate if you don't interfere with my training methods for my new apprentice. Hanata was confused. Apprentice, I'm sorry I don't know who you are, your name sir. Senzairu extended his hand, Senzairu, what's your name? Hugo Hanata, it's nice to meet you. After she shook his hand she turned to Konohamaru, do you think it's wise to leave him? He looks like he's doing everything to stay afloat. Of course he is. With the pain I inflicted on his arms and legs purposely, he should be. So, Hugo Hanata, I heard that name before. You're Hyashi-san's daughter correct? Hanata nodded, yes. Senzairu touched the girl's shoulder, well, I have to go. Please don't interfere, it's a test of sorts. Later, Senzairu walked off. Hanata looked at the man ask he walked off, she then turned to see Konohamaru. Hanata wanted so much to help Konohamaru. She decided that she would help if he started to sink. Fifteen minutes later, Konohamaru made it to shore, but boy was he pissed. Hanata never heard one person curse so much in her life. That goddamn bastard, what the hell was his problem? Calm down Konohamaru-kun, I'm sure he had his reasons, more importantly are you okay? The concern was visible on her face. Konohamaru took off the wet shirt and wringed it out, I'm fine. He said he was a slave driver, but I didn't expect this. So Hanata, have you seen Hanabi-chan? I've been looking for her, but she has been nowhere in sight. Hanabi, well if I know father he is preparing her for her fight with me later on. Hanata still was uneased by fighting her sister. So it's true, I heard Uncle Asuma mention something about that but I didn't know if it was true. Hanata, Konohamaru tone caused Hanata to look at the boy, his features showing that his worry, 
Hanabi can be stubborn at times, but she is a good person. I know most think of her as arrogant, but that's because she is afraid and doing so pushes people away. Most people want to be her friend, as well as mine because of who our family is, not who we are. I know. Hanabi is my sister and I love her so I would never or could never harm her. It is my job to protect her, which is why I must fight her without holding back. All of those years that we fought were a combination of me pulling my punches as well as low self-esteem. Like me, she is a victim of the rules and the expectations that are placed before all Hugo. If I am to protect her, I must shatter those rules and expectations for her sake as well as the sake of the clan. Hanata stood up and held out her hand for Konohamaru to grab. Come, I will treat you to breakfast Konohamaru-kun. Konohamaru decided to stand without taking her hand. Thanks, but I can't. I'm sure that the bastard is waiting for me at his house. My training isn't over and I will probably regret it taking time to talk to you. Either way, I will see you later, Hanata. Konohamaru ran off waving goodbye as he did. Hanata was about to leave, but decided against it. She just plopped back down on the grass and laid back. Her gaze fixed toward the morning sky. The sun had risen, and maybe she could look at that as a foreshadowing of the Hugo clan's future. A new day was going to begin, but first she would have to just win. There was no tomorrow. Closing her eyes to relax her mind, Hinata drifted off into a slumber. Cloud Village, 8 a.m. Azu was in his office sorting through the missions he was to assign to his nin. He heard knocking at the door, come in. Before Azu stood one of the captains he sent to capture Uzumaki, but why was he here? So, I take it that you have found and dispatched Uzumaki. I can only guess you are here to bring me the sword I told you to retrieve. Sorry sir, but our search continues. Honestly sir, I don't think we are going to find him. The guy has fallen of off the face of the earth. We have searched every country since the mission was assigned. Sir, we will continue our search, I just thought I would inform you on how it's going. Azu stood up and walked around his desk. He was now standing on the man's left side. If I don't see you guys, then I know you are still on mission. The next time I see you guys, I want his head and his sword. Here is a suggestion. You might want to stay close to the leaf village. I'm sure soon it has Anbu patrolling within 20 miles of Kanoa from all directions. So getting inside the village is impossible. However, you might hear something if you keep your hair to the ground long enough. You guys are the best at what you do. You and the other captain's squads can find needles in a haystack so go and find Uzumaki. The captain bowed, yes sir, we will complete our mission. The captain moved with such speed it almost was as if he teleported out of the room. Azu sat on his desk, what the hell are you doing Uzumaki? He has four months left, I don't know why I feel, worried. He has years until he reaches my level and I will crush him before he does. Naya's place. Naruto decided to skip sword training today. He decided to relax. The last time he was at the Namika's house, he snatched the diary that was in his parents' room. He knew it was private, but he felt that reading it would give him a better understanding of who they were. As he discovered, from reading his mother's journal a couple of days ago, she wasn't a shinobi. He told himself he would read her diary later, the one that he wanted to read was his father's. The man that was once his idol and the one he hated all at the same time was an enigma. Naruto needed to understand this man better. Although nothing beats the real thing, the diary was the closest he could get. Naruto was skimming through all of the boring stuff, but storing it away at the same time. Finally after flipping through many pages, he landed on a page with something that caught his interest. Today was a wonderful day. I finally was able to utilize my Horatian technique. After years of creating and training, I finally have mastered it. I am think taking leave for a couple of months during the ceasefire to hone my skills here in the northern mountain hills of fire country. I wish I could have brought Kushina with me, but, then again I would have never gotten any training done. I can wait to get back home. My sensei's novels are great, but they're nothing compared to her touch. When I do get back, I'm going to grab her and just... Naruto threw the book down after reading a little more. He put his head down, my old man was a perv too. The future doesn't look too good for me. Am I fated like all men, to be a pervert? Naruto prayed that wasn't the case. However, something did catch his interest. Northern mountain hills of fire country, Naruto decided to go back a few pages that he skipped and continue reading. 
he discovered that his father had a little place within those mountains. Talk about seclusion, Naya was secluded, but those mountains were miles away from any form of civilization. At least Naya was 20 miles away from a town. Naruto had to pass those mountains on a mission one time, and boy did it take him forever to find the nearest town. But, he was curious. Maybe the little sanctuary that the fourth had created was still there. He could stay there if it was, but whether it was there or not, training away from everything, even Naya and Kaito, was better. Everywhere he turned, his sensei was telling him to rest. In his mind he felt he didn't have time to rest. He had a little over four months and where he was at wasn't good enough. He needed to be in solitude. His mind was made up, he was heading back to Fire Country, but this time it wasn't to the Leaf Village. Northern mountain hills of Fire Country, here I come. Kanoa, midday. The Hugo Courtyard was usually a deserted place. However that was not the case today. Members from the Hugo Council, as well as the Branch House and Main House, were in the courtyard. Other shinobi was also present, but only the ones Hyashi had said were to watch, they were Hanata's close friends. Kiba and Akamaru looked a bit nervous, the same could be said for Kurenai. Shino was Shino, calm and collected. Sunid was there, as Hokage, things of significant importance like this required her presence. Everyone from the Rookie 9, Guy's squad and the Junin were there, except Naruto and Sasuke, for obvious reasons. Hanabi was standing in the middle of the courtyard dressed in the purple ninja outfit that she trained in. She patiently waited for Hanata, who had yet to show up. Hanabi prayed she showed, because even if she lost by default, Hinata still would die. Kiba was worried about his comrade as well, damn it, where the hell are you Hinata? Shino gently placed his hand on the shoulder of a pacing Kiba, patience my friend, Hinata will show. Hyashi was waiting for his daughter to show up. He knew it, she was a coward and had disgraced him in front of the family once again. He was forced to take back his thoughts when he saw a lone figure walk into the courtyard. The sun high above made the girl heading in the direction look like a walking silhouette from a distance. When Hanata came into view everyone was a little surprised at what they saw. Kakashi, who was reading his book, had almost dropped it. Kiba always looked at Hanata like a little sister, but right now his thoughts were in the gutter. The purple hall to top with the matching spandex showed off Hanata's figure to its fullest degree. Most didn't get to see her this way because Hanata was always conservative. Hanata opted to wear an outfit similar to the one that Naya had given her during her training with slight modifications. Although she still had the ankle warmers, that Lee and Guy gave thumbs up to, she also had on the type of armbands that Sasuke and Ino used to wear. Hanabi never saw her sister like this, you don't have to go parading around. I so hate you right now, Hanata. Hyashi stepped forward and motioned for the girls to come close. When they got close, he spoke, I expect you two to give your all. The last one standing wins. That means you can only win by knocking your opponent out or by killing them. I already know who's going to win, so Hanabi make this quick. Hyashi gave Hanata a look of disgust before he walked away. Hanata stared at her father, but then turned her attention to Hanabi. Her sister had already slipped into a fighting stance. Hanata, Hanabi called out to the girl. Once she saw she had her undivided attention, she continued, I will let you win this. I really don't want you die. So, let's just give them a good show. Hanata slipped into the same Jukan stance that Hanabi slipped into, sorry Hanabi, but I don't want you to hold back. Fight me with everything you have sister. Are you crazy, you will be killed. Hanata don't act tough, you can't beat me. Please Hanata, just do this for me, Hanabi pleaded. Hanata smiled at her little sister, Hanabi-chan, I know you don't think I can beat you, but it's like I said, I never wanted to hurt you. Sisters, brothers, family in general should never have to fight. I love you Hanabi and I could never harm you, which is why I never put my all in our battles. Even if I did, father wouldn't have liked me better for it. I would have gotten scolded for hurting you. I know you're trying to protect me, but that's my job. I'm the big sister, it's time I start acting like it. Please Hanabi-chan, come at me with everything you have. This fight is bigger than you and me. Don't insult its importance by only giving half. Hanata's mind was made up, this she could see. She closed her eyes to mentally prepare herself for what she was about to do. She knew she would hate herself for it, but this is what Hanata wished then to be it. Okay, 
I will not be holding back, but I did try to help you. Come sister, let us begin. Hanata nodded. The two girls started to circle the field, neither attacking. They were sizing the other up. Hanata knew Hanabi was good, but she had the advantage. Hanabi didn't know what she was capable of. The two continued to circle, looking for an opening. Hanabi was the first to strike. She aimed for Hanata's shoulder, her thoughts were to seal one of her arms and end it quickly, she never expected Hanata to match her speed and block, but she did. Hanabi's initial shock gave Hanata the time she needed to place her knee in Hanabi's gut following that up with a kick from the opposite foot that sent the girl skidding across the floor. Hanata jumped back to create a significant distance. She's still not serious. I have to force her, and the way to do that is by hurting her pride. I should expect her to come at me with everything she has. Hanata knew her sister all right, because Hanabi was pissed and it showed. This was the first time Hanata landed a hit on her, but what surprised Hanabi was that she did it with little effort. Okay, you want a fight, then I will give you one. Hanabi slipped back into her jukan. She would apply more chakra to her hands and strike with greater force. Hanata knew what was coming. She prepared herself. Kiba looked over at Kurenai, wow, I never knew Hanata was that fast. I guess she is full of surprises, Kurenai said. Kakashi, who was standing next to Kurenai couldn't have agreed more. Something told him that this fight was going to be good. He decided to pull up his high eight, uncovering his left eye. Suna glanced at Kakashi, so, he thinks it's going to be interesting, well seeing that she trained under Naya, I'm sure it will be. Hanabi and Hinata closed the distance until fist met fist. Hand strike after hand strike, kick after kick, block after block, visible chakra was seen with each hit and block. Hyashi, along with the rest of the Hyuga were stunned. Never did they see Hinata fight with so much intensity or use the Jukan this effectively. The girl was fighting like she belonged in the head house. Every hit that Hinata blocked frustrated Hanabi even more. Hanabi was flying through ideas in her head to end it but it was like Hanata was a step ahead of her, shit, she's not allowing me to hit any major areas that would make her jukan ineffective. In fact she's meeting with equal force, but how did she get this strong? I refuse to believe she was always this strong. She couldn't have let me one, I refuse to believe that. Hanabi decided to do a leg sweep, when Hanata jumped over it she smiled, got you, realizing her mistake she flew through hand seals as fast as she could to stop Hanabi, who used the leg swipe to spin into the chitin. Hanata only got hit with the initial blast which was good, because had she taken that hit at full power she would surely be out of it. Hanabi wondered why she stopped, but saw the mud that stopped her spin. She didn't get to complete the chitin, but the initial spin blew Hanata a few feet away, Hanabi was glad because the way Hanata was falling, it was clear that she wasn't going to get back up once she hit the floor. Hyashi smirked, I must admit, great counter from that position and even though Hanabi didn't get to complete her chitin, it was enough to end this. So, you improved a little, but it wasn't enough. Sunid, Kakashi, and everyone else from Guy Team and the Rookie 9 looked as Hanata was coming down slowly. They didn't want to believe it, but it was over. A lone figure with her cloak on just smiled, now it begins. Everyone eyes widened when Hanata backflipped at the last moment landing in crouching position with one hand supporting her. She quickly grabbed three kunai from her pouch and threw them with force. Hanabi saw the kunai speeding towards her. Although they weren't on target to kill her, but two were aimed at her shoulders while the other was coming at her leg. She cursed Hanata for catching her off guard with that doten jutsu. Hanabi put Chakra to her feet and jumped out of the way causing her to hit the ground. Hanata stood up and switched to her fighting stance. One of the Hyuga elders looked at Hyashi, what the hell is this? That's not the Jukan stance, Hyashi. She is disgracing the Hyuga, put her down. Sunid spoke, if he makes a move, I will be forced to crush him. If I'm not mistaken, Hyashi said that anything goes. The Hyuga who was looking at Sunid, turned back to Hyashi who really wasn't paying attention to the man. His eyes were on Hinata and they were filled with anger. Every time he saw Hinata, he couldn't help but see his dead wife. He despised her, not only that, but she was the one who came back alive, each and every day he looked at Hinata he couldn't help but see her. The girl was more and more like her. Hinata, who had her Byakugan activated saw her father looking at her with animosity in his eyes. He still hates me. Why father, why do you hate me? 
I know why, but I can't apologize for something out of my realm of control. I don't care about the main house and the branch house, it doesn't matter. All I ever wanted was to make you proud of me, but the harder I tried, the higher you standards became. Watch me father, I will make you see me, I will make you respect me. Hanabi dusted herself off then slipped back into her Jukan stance, what, decided to choose a new stance because my Jukan is better. That's not the case at all. I told you Hanabi-chan that this fight is bigger than you and me. Hanata said while her eyes were on her father. Then switch back so we can continue. Hanabi demanded. No, Hanabi-chan. I want to show father and the elders that the Jukan isn't as perfect as they think. But also, I want to show the elders that learning and utilizing different techniques can be beneficial to the clan. Hanabi-chan, I'm fighting to change the clan. Understand where I'm coming from sister. Hanata extended her hand and spread her legs until she was closer to the ground. Hanabi didn't have time to worry about this new style her sister was about to show. She had no data on it and didn't know how to combat it. If it was a regular opponent it wouldn't have mattered because Jukan could have taken it down. However this was an entirely different case. Hanata was a Huga, and about a half an hour ago she wouldn't have thought anything of that fact, but Hanata proved that she could keep up with her skill. Neji who sensed a presence above him, was curious about the figure above him on the roof. Shino looked at Neji, are you worried about Hinata or the person above us? The latter, I can't identify said person. Neji said to Shino in a low voice. Kakashi, Guy, Asuma, and Sunid overheard the two who were keeping their voice at a whisper. The three looked at Sunid who nodded causing the three men to disappear. Neji looked at Sunid who nodded, he understood, she sent him to take care of it. Well, I guess it has been taken care of. Shino replied. Neji decided to keep focused on the fight. Hyashi looked to Sunid, so, she sensed it as well. Good, I don't have to worry about it. He turned back to look at the fight. Kakashi, Guy, and Asuma surrounded the cloaked figure. I guess I couldn't stay hidden from you, a eh, Kakashi-kun, Guy-kun, and Asuma-kun. Kakashi spoke in a calm manner while the others wondered how this person knew the names, so you know our names, might we ask who you are? I'm surprised you forgot me, Kakashi-kun. You would think you would remember old me. The cloaked figure removed the hood to reveal her face. Kakashi's eyes widened, along with Guy's, and Asuma's. Naya-san. You have grown, Kakashi-kun. My fault, I meant to say, Sharingan Kakashi, and look at you Asuma, last time I saw you, you had peach fuzz, and I see it finally grew. Guy, I see you still have the same unique fashion sense. Asuma spoke, what brings you here after all of these years, Naya-san? I have my reasons, but right now I'm trying to look at this fight. She sat down on the roof and looked at the two girls circle each other. Guy spoke, this is great. Naya-san, I have this student who trains day and night and I was thinking since you gave Naruto-kun his. She cut Guy off, no. I helped Naruto out for a reason. Besides, your student can make do without gravity seals. I'm not here to join the village, I didn't come here for this. My purpose is to remain secret. I know you are going to tell Sunid of my presence but I ask you not to. She will see me soon enough. You guys don't have to stand, you can sit and watch the fight with me. Guy and Asuma sat down, Kakashi on the other hand didn't she looked at him, what, too good to sit next to me, Kakashi-kun. He ignored her and asked, how is he doing? She looked away and focused on the fight. After a long pause, she answered, truthfully, I don't know if he's going to be able to master it within in the time necessary. That's partially why I'm here, but enough about that. She smiled at the Junin, sit, 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 Kakashi-kun. Kakashi sat down next to Naya. Sunid wondered why Kakashi and the rest weren't back. Never mind that, they can take care of themselves. This fight is really heating up. The fight was indeed heating up. Hanabi was trying to lay a hand on Hinata but she found she couldn't. One Hinata was shockingly faster, two her movements were more fluid. If Hanabi had to describe it, it was poetry in motion. She moved with the grace of a ballerina, but kept her ninja deadliness. Hanabi continued her attack and finally found an opening. She capitalized on it right away. She aimed at Hinata's heart and when she hit the crowd went silent, the hit echoed throughout the whole courtyard. Time stood still. Hinata flew a couple of feet away and landed hard. Hanabi closed her eyes, when Hinata hit the ground. 
If Hanata wasn't dead from that, there was no way she was getting back up from it. You fought like a true warrior sister, and for that you have my respect. Ino looked at Hanata, oh my god, Hanata. Shikamaru lazily spoke, this fight is so over, Hanata really should stop playing and end this now. Ino turned to Shikamaru, what the hell are you say? Hanata is laying there motionless, Shikamaru pointed to Hanata while yawning. Shino spoke, I see. Hanata body turned into a log. Hanabi, who deactivated her Byakugan soon after and was surprised to hear kunai coming at her from behind, she quickly knocked him away with the kunai she pulled from her pouch. The thing she noticed was that Hanata was not where she landed, then it hit her, Kawarimi. Hanabi saw a kunai fly at her, she tilted her head to the side to dodge, but clearly that was a mistake. The kunai turned into Hanata, who planted her foot into Hanabi's jaw, knocking the girl off of her feet. Hanata slipped back into her fighting position waiting for her to get up. Hanabi rubbed her jaw, then picked herself up. How did you dodge that attack? I hit you in the heart, you shouldn't be standing. Hanata answered, you're experiencing the point I'm trying to make to the elders. The Jukan can be stopped. I won't tell you how I did it, but it can be nullified. Ino started cheering, Hanata that was awesome, give a left kick. Kiba joined in, give her a knuckle sandwich. Lee started cheering as well, show her your youthful spirit, Hanata-san. Shikamaru covered his ears, troublesome idiots. I wish Hanata would end this already, if only to shut them the hell up. Hanabi looked at the group, then back at Hanata, who was five feet away. Look at those idiots cheer for you. I never have anyone cheer for me. I always hated that. I was always stronger, faster, more agile yet you always had what I never had, people who liked you for you. Well, I guess we both have something to be envious at. Father always treated you better. I couldn't bring myself to hate you for it, but I was always jealous of that, Hanabi-chan. All I ever wanted was my family to see me and respect me for me. Looking at Hanata and listening to what she just said, her and her sister had more in common than they thought. Both wanted what the other had more than anything. Hanata smiled at her little sister, Hanabi-chan, if it counts I have always seen you as a friend. Hanabi returned the smile, but slipped back in her stance, if you didn't have my respect before Hanata, you have it now. Regardless of what happens here Hanata, let's give it all we got. Hanata nodded. She quickly blurred out of Hanabi's sight appearing in front of the young Huga, but she quickly blocked the attack. Hanabi tried to strike Hanata in the chest again, but her attack was blocked. Hanata created distance from her and Hanabi by jumping to the side. She quickly performed the hand seals to perform a fire attack. Hanabi decided to play Hanata's game and use a water attack that cancelled out the fire attack. The smoke screen faded in a matter of seconds and the two were continuing their taijutsu match. It was evident that fatigue was taking its toll on Hanabi. Hanabi aimed her foot at Hanata's stomach, but Hanata backflipped a few feet away from Hanabi. The younger Hugo decided it was time to pull out the stops, she's within range. She won't have time to counter. It's now or never. Hanabi slipped into a stance that Hanata recognized, shit. Hanabi smiled, Hakurokiju Yonshu, Hanata knew there was only way to stop Hanabi from ending it here. What she did next shocked everyone except Kiba and Shino. I have to keep this up, Shugo Hakurokiju Yonshu will shield me from her strikes, I just have to match her speed and force so she doesn't break through. Hanabi couldn't believe what she was seeing. Every strike was effectively countered by a technique she had never seen used. What was this technique? It kind of reminded her of Kaiten, but without the spinning. Hyashi narrowed his eyes. How did she learn such a technique? Kiba spoke, I knew that technique would be useful. You're awesome Hanata. Ino joined in on the chanting and cheering with Kiba and Lee. Neji looked at Shino, how long has she known that technique? Since she were 12. This was news to everyone including Kurenai. Shino continued, after her loss to you, she wanted to create a technique that was her own, but that would not disgrace her family. She thought that if she showed her father that she created a technique that all Hyuga could utilize, he would accept her. Sunid overheard what Shino said and looked at Hyashi who still was glaring at Hinata. Blind fool, it's not her fault. I must say, that was impressive. I thought it was over as well. She seems determined. I don't know what you did Naya, but thank you. Hanabi was glaring at Hinata. What the hell was that? A technique I created six years ago. 
Hanabi was surprised, but it stung her pride as well. She created a technique when she was a genin. Not just any technique, but from what I can gather she created an ultimate shield of sorts. Damn you, Hanata. Hanata didn't waste any time, she used her jukan and struck Hanabi in the gut. Hanabi was not ready for this, the expression on her face showed this. She dropped to one knee. She glanced up at Hanata, who was trying her best to hold back her tears, and then fell forward on her face. Everyone turned to the gate when they heard Konohamaru yelled out, Hanabi-chan get up. What are you doing sleeping on the job? You can win. Get up now Hanabi and fight. Hanata looked at the boy, she then turned to see her sister who was slowly rising. Freaking idiot doesn't know how to shut the hell up. Hanata knew that this fight was over, but she knew how her sister felt. It was the same she felt when she was fighting Neji. When Naruto cheered her on it felt like she could do anything. Although she was happy that Hanabi had at least one friend, she still had to put her down for good. Hanabi coughed up blood then moved back into her fighting stance. It's over, Hanabi-chan. Please, don't continue. You were the one who said not to hold back. Well it ain't over, I'm still standing. One eye was lower than the other. She was doing her best to try and stay awake. Hyashi was looking at Hanabi. He hated to admit it but Hinata was going to win. He still couldn't help but get angry every time he looked at the girl. His anger was spilling out, soon it could feel the killer intent coming from him. Better keep my eye on him. A tear fell down Hinata's eye. Hanabi please, don't continue. You don't have anything to prove. Why must it come to this? Why must I harm you? I'm supposed to protect you from getting hurt. Hanabi rushed her and continued with her strikes. Hanata dodged them with ease. The blow she delivered to Hanabi's stomach had slowed the girl down considerably. Hanata continued to talk while she dodged. We are supposed to be fighting over who used up all of the shampoo, talking about what boys we both like, our first kisses and things of that nature. Hanata caught both hands. Hanabi could now see the pain on her face more clearly. But, if me winning this fight so I can live another day to do all of those things with you Hanabi-chan, then I will do what I must. Forgive me, Hanabi-chan. Hanata threw both hands to the side leaving Hanabi's chest wide open. She brought her right hand back. Everything moved in slow motion as her hand was coming forth. When the hit made contact the only thing that was heard was Hanabi landing hard and bouncing up and then landing again. It was officially over, Hanata had won. Hanata, however, wasn't too thrilled about her victory. Tears were falling down her eyes. She knew what she had to do, but she had to injure her only sister to get it done. Hyashi couldn't take it anymore, she wins, yet she is crying over her victory. She's too weak to lead this clan. It's her fault anyway. She was the reason, why she died. I, I, Hyashi shunshined out of sight, soon it was going to move but didn't, well, well so it really was her. When Hyashi got within striking distance, he swung at the unsuspecting Hinata. He saw that Kakashi had a hand on his striking hand, Kurenai was holding his other arm and Guy was holding his waist from behind but none of them stopped him. What stopped him was a greenish-blue shield and a familiar face he hadn't seen in a long time that was responsible for it. His fingertips rested against the shield. Hinata looked at the lady wearing the cloak in front of her, she recognized the seal. Naya Sensei. Hinata managed to get out. Hyashi was glaring at Naya, who had her left arm extended, to maintain the shield. Naya returned the look, it's been a long time Hyashi Dono. She said the honorific with sarcasm. Get out of my way, Naya, this has nothing to do with you. I should kill you for removing her seal. Move Naya. No, and you can't stop me even if you wanted to Hyashi Dono. You wish to kill your daughter. Is it because she reminds you so much of Yuri-san? You think killing her will erase the memory of your wife, I see you have become foolish in your old age. Hyashi narrowed his eyes. Kakashi saw the chakra pattern in Hyashi with his Sharingan, he was about to perform Kaiten, damn it, I have to shield myself. This was the thoughts of all of the Junin holding him back. Before he could perform his Kaiten, he felt a hard strike to his neck. When he turned around slowly, he saw Sunit standing over him. Hyashi passed out. She looked over to see Hanabi was being tended to by the medical squad. She also saw Konohamaru following them. She motioned for one of the Hyuga to come, when one arrived she spoke, you can take him in the house, I just knocked him out. He should be up in an hour or two. Let him know that if he comes after Hinata again, 
he will have to deal with me. The Huga was helped by the other Huga. The elders who were watching were pissed. Hanata had exploited a loophole and made them look like fools. There was nothing they could do, she was now the head of the clan. They all headed back in the house. Hanata's friends ran up to her but she ran past them to run up to the doctors carrying her sister. She looked at the medic, will she be okay? Yes. She will be really sore for the next couple of days, and we will have to monitor her kidneys and her heart, but she should be fine. Hanata was relieved. She turned to Konohamaru, I'm sorry Konohamaru, I didn't mean. It's okay. I know you wouldn't hurt her without good reason, Hanata. Don't worry about Hanabi, I will watch over her. Go join your friends. Hanata didn't want to leave Hanabi, but she knew she couldn't do anything for her. She slowly watched the doctors take her to the hospital. Kiba grabbed her shoulder, that was awesome, Hanata. Ino grabbed the other, I didn't know you were that good. Wow I don't want to fight you ever. Hanata looked towards the porch to see Neji looking at her. He smiled and nodded at her. She knew that was his way of saying good job. Hanata turned around to see Naya walking towards her with Sunid and the other Junin senseis. Naya sensei, what are you doing here? Sakura recognized that name, you're, the seal mistress. Everyone turned to Naya, stunned by the revelation. She sighed, looking at Sakura, she said, Naya is just fine. Lee knocked Sakura down to get up close to the lady, you're really her. If so can you please give me the same seals Naruto-san has? No, Naya said bluntly. I'm sorry, but like I told Guy, who I can only assume you were the student he was talking about, talk about wanting to be like your master, I didn't come here for that. Besides, you don't need seals to make you stronger. You can get that done with hard work and training. Guy jumped in, she's right Lee. We will have to increase your training. We will train from sun up to sun down. Lee pumped his fist, yes Guy Sensei. I will become much stronger by working harder. Guy Sensei. Lee. The two men leaped into each other's arms repeatedly shouting out each other's name. Naya turned slightly to Sunid, what the hell is wrong with them? One branch short of a leaf is what I always say. So, what is your business here, Naya? Sunid asked. I'm here to see your son. I need to talk to him about something. She informed Sunid. This grabbed the curiosity of Sunid as well as the others. Oh, what does it concern? Look Sunid Senpai, I understand you want to know, but it's kind of private. Sunid was determined to find out what she needed to talk to him about. Naya saw the look that Sunid was giving, I hate that look. Naya sighed, I will talk to you before I leave here. I need to find him, do you know where he's at right now? Kakashi spoke, last I saw him he was training his squad. They're probably on break since it's a little past one. Naya saw the man dressed in Anbu garbs from the corner of her eye. She was once a member and the training never left her. The way the man moved she knew instantly he was from Root, so you are going to put your dogs on me Danzu. They'll lose the scent before they know I'm gone. Well, when will he be home? She asked Sunid. Usually he comes in at around 9 at night. Come with me Naya, I will entertain you until then. Sunid hoped she would accept. This would give her enough time to place an Anbu squad on her. Naya smirked, niece try Sunid senpai, but you forgot that I'm a ninja as well, later. Naya formed a hand seal that blinded everyone. When their vision returned five seconds or so, later she was gone. Sunid cursed herself, I should have counted that technique. It's going to be hard to keep track of her, that's for sure. Sunid looked around to see that they were the only ones in the courtyard. Well, now that this is done, you guys can go about your business. Hanata, you on the other hand come with me. Everyone left the courtyard. Hanata was the last to leave, she looked back at her home, I hope I have the strength to do what is necessary. She followed Sunid to her office. 5pm, Naya's place. Kaito slept most of the day away, but that was the thing, he actually got some sleep. He decided to go to Naruto's room to check up on him. I bet he's resting. Slacker. He opened the door, hey Naruto, taking my V. He entered a room with a neatly made bed and a letter addressed to him and Naya. Kaito opened it. Dear Kaito and Naya, I've decided that Naya's place may not be the best place for me to train. I can't tell you where I'm going, but just know that I will be in complete seclusion. Anyway, thanks for helping me out, but from here on out I have to do this alone. I will see you guys soon. The greatest ninja ever, Uzumaki Naruto.
Kaito threw the letter on the bed, I guess he's tired of the parental control. I hope you know what you're doing, Naruto. I really hope you know what you're doing. Two hours later, Kanoa. Konohamaru was sitting at Hanabi's bedside holding her hand. He heard her groan, you. Hanabi-chan, you're up. He said with excitement. Yes, but I wish I wasn't, your yelling is giving me a headache. Where am I? Hanabi asked. You're in the hospital. Your father was here earlier, but he left. Konohamaru informed her. Oh, he must be disappointed in me. I still can't believe that I lost to Hanata. By the way, she used as much strength as her body would give her to turn her head, what about Hanata? Hanata just left. She went to get you some flowers from Eno's parents' flower shop. Are you hungry, Hanabi-chan? Konohamaru asked the girl. Speaking in a weak voice, yes, and don't call me that. Konohamaru got up, well, I will get you some soup. I'll be back real soon. Hanabi looked at the door. She strained her voice to get his attention, Konohamaru. He turned to look at the girl, yes. Thank you. This caused the Sarutobi to smile. He then left her alone. Hanabi turned to face the ceiling, I lost. I got minimal movement in my arms and legs. I wonder if she fought me to her fullest. Hanabi closed her eyes, I guess it's better it turned out this way. My only chan gets to live. Well, I can live with that. However, what I can't live with is her beating me. When I'm better, I swear I'm going to train until I'm strong enough to challenge her. Hanabi was jolted out of her thoughts when she heard knocking on the door that was already opened. She turned her head to see that it was Hanata with a bunch of flowers. Hanata walked over to the window ledge and placed the flowers on the ledge. She then turned to Hanabi, how are you feeling? I can't move Hanata, how do you think I'm feeling? Hanabi said. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to help you sit up? Hanata asked. Hanabi was reluctant but then she said, okay, but move slowly I'm sore. Oh, I'm sorry about that Hanabi-chan I didn't, Hanabi stopped her. Yes you did. I bear no hard feelings. I do however ask that you give me a rematch when I feel like having one. Just me and you, no clan, none of your friends, no one is to be present. I need to know for myself, Hanabi said. Okay Hanabi. So, so, I heard father was here. Hanabi said. Yes, he was. I officially start tomorrow. I will be head of the clan. Hanata informed Hanabi. What do you plan to do? A curious Hanabi questioned. The first thing I plan to do is abolish the curse seal. I will remove it from every member, thus combining the two houses. After that I will place a seal on every Huga that will seal off our bloodline limit when we die. Unlike the caged bird seal, this seal will only seal off our bloodline limit. Once that is done I'm going to step down and turn over control to father, Hanata informed Hanabi who was shocked. Father, but why? Hanabi asked. I don't really want to lead the clan, Hanabi. I just want to unite the clan. We are family, but we are so divided that we forget that. The power the main house holds over the branch causes their hatred toward the main house, and the main house misuses that power and is becoming arrogant towards the branch house. Hanabi understood what Hanata was saying. She found herself looking down on branch members. What was ironic about the main house superiority complex was that the strongest member resided in the branch. Hanata decided to change the subject, so, what happened over the past two months? Hanabi thought about what happened, where do I begin? After a 20 minutes of telling Hanata what had happened, Hanabi finally told her that she kissed Konohamaru. Hanabi wanted to just die due to Hanata's silence. Do you like him? Hanata asked. Um, yeah, I guess, Hanabi said sounding like she wasn't sure what she should have said. If you like him then you like him. You shouldn't hesitate to tell a person how you feel about them Hanabi, you might lose your chance to tell them. Hanata knew this all too well. The good thing about her situation was she could put it behind her and move on. It would have hurt more if Naruto was with someone who didn't appreciate him but that wasn't the case with Yumi. Yumi truly loved Naruto. Hanata couldn't have been happier for him. Hanabi was about to say something when Konohamaru walked in with her soup. Hanata stood up, well I have to go, can you help feed her Konohamaru? He nodded. She then turned to Hanabi, I will check on you tomorrow Hanabi-chan, and remember what I said. The two watched the older Hyuga exited the room. Konohamaru, turned to Hanabi, how come she gets to call you Hanabi-chan and I can't? She smiled, because, you are an idiot and she's my sister. 
Konohamaru shrugged and stuck the spoon with soup in her mouth. Hanabi immediately spit the soup out, doing idiotic things like that is why you can't call me Hanabi-chan. The soup is hot you idiot, are you trying kill me? Konohamaru scratched the back of his head, sorry about that. Freaking idiot just put the soup down. Hanabi just laid back. Maybe Hanata was right, but she had time to tell him. She was just grateful that he was there, somebody cared and that's all that mattered. Somewhere in Kanoa, in the shadows of the village where most things were overlooked stood Danzu and the member of his root squad. So, you said you spotted Naya, this is good. We could put her expertise to use in this war. Sir, shouldn't we use her location to find Naruto and keep tabs on him? The root member suggested. She will lead us to that brat. We can keep tabs on him then. The thing I'm concerned about is him mastering that technique then taking out his vengeance on the village. When you tail her and you find him, watch him closely. If you feel that he is close to mastering that technique, eliminate him. It is Root's job to protect the village, even if we are hidden and unseen. Do you understand, Sai? Yes, I understand sir, Sai responded. Danzu continued, I placed you in Kakashi's squad three years ago to eliminate the Uchiha, but you failed at that, now he will become Rokudime. I don't want you to kill Uzumaki unless you absolutely have to, is that clear? Sai nodded, crystal clear sir. I will put forth my best effort. I'm sure you will. Danzu watched as Sai left. Out of the shadows another root member stepped forward, so, do you think he will follow through sir? No, he has crossed over onto Sunid's side. He has lost the vision that I have shown him of my Kanoa long ago. I want you to follow him and well, you and your squad are to eliminate Uzumaki. If you can retrieve that Horatian scroll, bring it to me. Naya is not to die, she is still of some use to this village. Head out. Danzu leaned on his cane. Sasuke was now out of reach, but it was okay, because he was a Kanoa nin. Uzumaki wasn't which meant he was a threat. He always saw the third as a fool for not using the boy as the village's ultimate weapon. He was against the boy's banishment more than anyone. Didn't they realize what he held with him? Naruto was now dangerous and he needed to be dealt with. He cursed Jiraiya for watching the boy from the shadows, had it not been for the Sanan he would have had the boy killed the moment he stepped out of the village. The village's safety, that was the job of Root. Protect the great tree that is Kanoa without being seen. Danzu faded into the shadow. 10 p.m., Sunid's house. Yumi was sitting next to Hayami, reading the girl a story. The girl was hugging the stuffed fox animal that Sunid had gotten for her a while back. Yumi finished up the story, and they lived happily ever after. That was a nice story, Yumi Nei Chan. Can I ask you something, Nei Chan? Yumi looked at the little girl, sure ask, away. Mommy and Daddy, they didn't have no happy ending because they were killed right. Yumi heard the sadness in her voice. Yumi thought about how to answer this. She finally came up with a good answer, I don't think that's the case. Your mommy and daddy are in heaven now. They might be sad that you aren't with them, but they are happy knowing your brother is watching over you. I think that all good people have happy endings. Your mommy and daddy had a happy ending. Besides, they're watching over you, your Nissan, and Shinji. But they were killed, how can that be seen as a happy ending? Hayami started to cry. I told you, that all good people have happy endings. Sure, they were killed, so was my father. But I believe he is happy where he is now and the same can be said for your parents. Hayami-chan, don't cry. Everything is going to be fine, Yumi said hoping that this would reassure the girl. Yumi kissed the girl on the forehead, get some sleep, Hayami-chan. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I will stay until you fall asleep. Thank you Nei Chan, you're the best. Hayami hugged Yumi then laid back down. Good night Nei Chan, Hayami said. Good night, Hayami. Yumi watched the girl drift off. She walked over to the window. She saw Senzairu in the backyard talking to some lady. Yumi closed the curtains so the sun wouldn't disturb the girl in the morning. She planned to sit there for 10 minutes until Hayami was asleep. She would then head to her room and go to sleep. The backyard. Naya had finally gotten Senzairu alone. She had to stay low. But she was certain that Root was watching her. It didn't matter, though, they wouldn't catch her anyway. She looked at Senzairu, so, feels good to be back. Yes, it feels good to be home. Senzairu responded. So, that girl you were with is she your girlfriend? 
This comment caused Senzairu to blush. No, she's not my girlfriend geez, if it isn't you it's Anko. Enough about that, more importantly, his blush faded and it was replaced by a serious expression, why are you here? Naya walked past him then stopped, you know why I'm here, so tell me, are you able to do it or what? Senzairu looked away, no. What the hell is going on? Azu will make his final move during the exams, if you are not. Don't you think I know this? He yelled at her. He regained his composure and calmed himself, I know Naya. I can only assume that Naruto's training isn't going how you thought it would which is why you're here. I will tell you like I told Naruto, I don't even think I can take Azu, not when he has access to Soros. Zenos doesn't even answer my call when I summon him. You know the powers these contracts grant Naya. If I can't get Zenos to even answer my call what makes you think I can get him to do that? So, what are you going to do about it? Naya asked. First I need to know why he's pissed at me, which I'm pretty sure of the reason. Second, I need to try and make amends. I know you came here because you wanted to warn me that I should also be ready, but don't count Naruto out yet. As for me, I will try to correct this situation. He said trying to reassure her. Well, you work on that. I'm going to take precautions of my own. Naya said to Senzairu, this caused the man to wonder what she was going to do. What does that mean? He asked. It means that I'm going to do what I feel is necessary and you are going to do what is necessary. Senzairu, you are the only one who has the experience and the power to match him. You have to gain access to that power again. It's too much to place this on Naruto's shoulders. He's pushing himself too far to succeed. She wanted to believe in Naruto, but four months to master Horatian and Heaven's Blade, the odds were not in his favor. Well Senzairu I just wanted to tell you that. You can tell everyone that Naruto is fine. Well, I have to get going, Danzu has his dogs following me. Do you need me to cover you? Senzairu asked but Naya shook her head. No, I can lose these amateurs with a blind fold and a broken leg. I will be alright. Tell Sunid Senpai I am sorry we couldn't catch up but she would only be doing the same thing Danzu is doing. Senzairu laughed, you're right, well Naya-san I guess I will see you around. Take care of yourself. Don't worry I will. Naya did hand seals with only her left hand, she then blurred out of sight with Root hot on her tail. Senzairu laughed to himself, they're trying to track down an escape artist, good luck with that. Ten minutes later, Naya could feel they were on her tail, well I guess now it's time to leave these guys. I had enough of this game of tag. Naya used Shunshin, but she combined it with a Genjutsu. The Root Squad had the speed to keep up, however they didn't expect her to vanish into dust. It was as if she disintegrated before their eyes. The captain stopped, she used a Genjutsu to cover her tracks, but we still have her scent. She's heading west of here, follow that scent now. Naya watched from a branch as they head away from her. Danzu I'm disappointed, it shouldn't have been this easy to lose them. Either it's that or I'm getting good. I didn't expect them to fall for the glitter dust genjutsu. Not only that, they're going to have a blast chasing that goddamn squirrel with my scent concealed in a tag. Naya touched that string around her neck with a tag on it, I guess they can't catch me if I'm smell like the trees here in the forest. Well it was fun, but I should really be going. Naya headed right. Even if they caught the squirrel, they were too far away to track her anyhow. Also add that to the fact that she smelled like the forest so scent wasn't an option. She lost them before they even realized it. After 15 minutes of following her scent they came upon the squirrel with a tag on him. The captain picked up the squirrel and looked at the tag, which read, tell Danzu he's going have to do better than that to keep track of me. Also, you might want to put this down right about now. The captain and his squad fled the area as quickly as possible. It's a good thing because it was leveled by the explosion that followed. Naya who was miles away heard it and smiled, they never stood a chance, losers. She continued to hop from tree branch to tree branch until she faded into the darkness of the night. 1am, somewhere in fire country. Naruto was at the base of the mountain. He looked up and it seemed like there was no end in sight. He rubbed his hands, no guts, no glory. He walked over and started to climb the mountain. When he got a few feet away he looked up again, this is going to take a while. Naruto continued to climb and he wasn't going to stop until he reached the top. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.